Hey everybody, Joe Baker here with the Edit Bay. Tonight, I'm gonna share three quick tips for including denoising software in your post-production pipeline. The workflow for using denoising software is actually not common knowledge. I really had to dig around to find some answers on the best way to go about using them. So I'm not actually going to go into any detail on any particular denoising app. Instead, I'm going to share some of the best practices for treating noisy footage. I have a really noisy clip here. This was shot in really low light, and even though I was shooting wide open at f1.4, this still looks terrible. It's a slow death waiting for denoising apps to render. They're all really processor intensive. So my first tip is to choose your clips wisely. Most editors won't even attempt to denoise their entire project. If the clip is crucial enough to your story that you've opted out of leaving it on the cutting room floor, here's a couple things you can do. Now on to my second tip. I'm here in Premiere Pro CC, which is dynamically linked with After Effects. I'm going to be using Red Giant's Denoiser 2, which installs on both Premiere and After Effects. So I really could just apply the effect right here in Premiere, but there's some advantages to using After Effects. So my second tip is going to be to, I'm going to go ahead and delete this effect because we're not going to use it here in Premiere. My second tip is going to be to come over to your clip, right click on your clip, and select Replace with After Effects Composition. So according to Stu Mashwitz, Denoiser will not only clean up your noisy footage, but it'll bump up the bit depth of 8-bit footage and clean up some compression artifacts. So it's best to send your clip over to After Effects so that you can work in a 16-bit or 32-bit environment, which you can do by coming over here to the left side of the screen, hovering over here where it says 8 bits per channel, holding down the Alt key, left-clicking once. So we'll bump that up to 16 bits per channel. Now this particular plugin needs to have your preview monitor set to full, so I'm going to make sure that my preview monitor is set to full. I'm going to come up here to Effect, Red Giant Denoiser, Denoiser 2. Most denoising apps I've seen, by the way, need to be applied directly to the footage. They won't work if they're applied on an adjustment layer. So this effect has actually been designed to be drag and drop, but this is pretty noisy footage. So I'm going to bump up the noise reduction to about 200%. And it's dark, so I'm going to come down here and I'm going to boost this shadow offset a bit. Probably not easy to see over the screen capture, but if I toggle the effect on and off and you look in this area right here where you can see a bunch of noise, turn that back on, that got rid of quite a bit. And now that I have all of my parameters set, I'm just going to hit Control S to save the project. And then I'm going to Alt Tab back to Premiere. And you can see the clip is now pink. That's indicating that it's a nested After Effects comp. And now for my third tip. You see that red line above the clip right here? This After Effects comp is nested here on my Premiere Pro timeline. So Premiere is referencing a project file rather than a video file. There's no way I'm going to get real-time playback with such a processor-intensive effect. I'm running the risk of freezes and crashes. So now I'm going to right-click on this clip, and I'm going to select Render and Replace. I'm going to choose a QuickTime wrapper, and I'm going to go with the GoPro Cineform 12-bit Kodak right here. Make sure that this is selected right here. I'm going to render it next to the original media file. And this will render out that After Effects comp and then replace the original file with the rendered file. And now that the clip is rendered, I can go ahead and play through and I can get pretty decent playback on this, even at full res. Clip is denoise and I'm in a much better position right now for color grading. So to recap, my three tips, take a look at your timeline. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out of my timeline here. I have a ton of clips. I'm definitely not going to want to denoise every single one of them. My first tip would be to just be selective with that. If the clip is really close to being beyond help, but it's really crucial to your story, it may warrant a denoising pass. Tip two, send it to After Effects. Work in a 16 or a 32 bit per channel environment to really reap the benefits of your denoising app's power to reduce compression artifacts and to boost your color fidelity. Third tip, Render and replace it once you're in Premiere. That'll make your life a lot easier as far as playing back your project. All right, folks, this is Joe Baker with the Edit Bay. I hope these tips were useful to you. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the box below. I'll see you next time.